What's up? Welcome back. I'm John Stark from MacMoodGuy.com, your favorite blind film critic, and this is Woody Woodpecker Goes to Camp. This is exactly how I choose to spend my day. And um, this does have audio description by Descriptive Video Works, and it is written by Jeff Heck. And Jeff Heck has done uh, written narration for uh, some pretty decent projects. He did uh, No One Will Save You, which is one of my picks for best narration of 2023. Um, and he also writes the audio description for American Rust, uh, a show which got infinitely better when it moved to Freebie and gained audio description. So, um, yeah, uh, guess what? The audio description of this one is better than Ayudo's audio description on the original Woody Woodpecker. Um, not that this is necessarily like the easiest, best film to, you know, I'm sure Jeff Tism walked his entire career defined by this film. Um, I don't think anybody does, but uh, it is a better sequel. This sequel does feel more like some people came back around to Universal and were like, hey, we have an idea for Woody Woodpecker that isn't complete garbage. Would you like to hear it? And they were like, no. No, never, never again. Never with that franchise. But then they, those people just relentlessly kept talking and somehow this movie got made. It's just a camp movie. And I was sitting there watching this camp movie and I was like, why is it that every time we watch a camp movie... It always feels like the camp is on the verge of shutting down. You ever notice that with, like, kids' films? Nobody ever goes to, like, a camp that's like, yeah, we're solid. We're good to go. We've been here forever, and we're going to be here forever. It's like every camp movie is always, like, a rundown, like, Camp Nowhere. It's just a vacant camp that they revive. Uh, heavyweights. Camp gets sold. Ben Stiller buys it. <laughs> You know, I mean, they're just, and these camp movies seem to, every time, uh, even last year's film, the theater camp, the camp was, like, in danger of going out of business, and it's just like, is this a thing? Or, like, what are we trying to say about summer camps? Like, because well, here we are, once again, there's, like, danger in the camp, you know? Maybe the camp's not going to stay open, I don't know. You know, maybe Wood, Woody Woodpecker is going to be the one to save it. Because why not? So Woody Woodpecker goes to camp and saves it. Uh, it's a camp full of sort of like misfits and whatever. Misspent youth and, and, and unique individuals. Like it always is. All these camps are like that. And um, they... Uh, he bonds with the main girl whose mom also runs the camp. And uh, there's a there's a warring camp, again, because there's always a warring camp. Uh, the ca Camp Hua. <laughs> oh, yeah. Woo-hoo -ha, woo, woo and Hua are the, are the two names of the camps. And this, this is... Uh, somebody wrote this. Uh, a person, not AI. So, um, when we talk about AI scripts, maybe, maybe we could say that there are a few scripts in which <laughs> AI might surpass. <laughs> I've come up with better names than Woohoo and Hua, Hua, <laughs> as camp names. But, uh, I don't know, there's some asinine plot here where the, the camps have to go into, like, battle to for uh, to eventually win and, and whichever camp wins these games ends up winning and gets to stay and camp Hua is you know like a military style camp and the other one is more like nerds so of course they're unevenly balanced but Woody's gonna balance things out but unfortunately for Woody uh there are villains in this there's Zane, the questionably evil guy, other camp leader. Like, is he is he a bad guy or is he just misunderstood? We'll find out by the end of the film. Um, there's this goofy guy, 
that is, I don't know, in charge of making sure no one has salmonella. I don't know. I really don't know what this dude's job is. He just, he's there to like ruin and people's day and just, he's like the lack of fun. He's some sort of like, uh, health inspector, but for camps, I, I, I don't know. Don't ask me. This movie is dumb. And then there's a buzzard. So that Woody's not the only animated character in this film. <laughs> so there's a, there's a talking, there's a talking buzzard that's animated and evil as well. So yeah, um, it's a weird film. It's, it's, it's one of those hybrids, just like the last film was, uh, we got the same guy. Th that's the only thing that they kept was, uh, Eric Bowser does the voice of Woody Woodpecker. So I guess that makes it a sequel because it's the same guy doing the voice of Woody Woodpecker, but nothing else was kept. They abandoned everything else. There's no, there were no characters from the original film here from what I could tell. Although the original film was hot garbage. Um, this film is, is the kind of garbage that I think your kids might enjoy and is less like depressingly horrifying in certain places. Like it's like the whole, um, taxidermy sequence in the first one was a little bit, I was like, I don't know, man, uh, this is dark. This is, we're, we're getting dark here, but, um, yeah, so for for this, I think your kids like camp movies. So this is just having a cartoon character go to camp. Why not? Ernest went to camp. So why can't other people go to camp too? Um, basically, Yogi Bear lives in a camp. Sort of. Not this kind of camp, but a camp of some kind. So... I don't know what else to say about this film, guys. It's it's Woody Woodpecker goes to camp. Yeah, I don't think. Did you really want a review of it? Like, did you get it? Were you like, I don't know. I'm on the fence. Uh, when I see a review of this, I'll help make up my mind. Um, it's it's I don't know. It, let your kids watch it. it I it's it's not really for adults. It's, uh, even though Woody Woodpecker is an ancient franchise to them, um, this is them trying to make him relevant again. <sighs> so, audio description. Jeff's audio description is, is, is nice. Uh, it points out all of the sort of like little visual gags that Woody does that they're supposed to get into. He tries really hard. It's just the fun, the... <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that the movie isn't funny, so he points out all of what's supposed to be sight guys and what's supposed to be funny, but none of this stuff is actually funny. But I totally appreciate the fact that he points it out. It's just like, oh, yeah, there's an indention of Woody in the freezer, because that's hilarious. <sighs> it's not. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Like, the jokes are, are just, they're not funny. Um, but he makes sure to include all of them in the audio description. And this feels more like audio description. I made a comment about the last one. It felt more like actual, like, film narration. Like, it was more, um, far more integrated with the film in a weird way. To where it almost felt like the guy was actually the narrator of the film instead of the audio describer of the film. <laughs> like the actual, it's a very weird experience. This one feels a lot more like this narrator is way more doing audio description um, than she is being a part of the film. So, yeah. Two totally different experiences, two totally different companies. Descriptive Video Works usually puts out good good stuff, so I'm happy about that. Um, I don't really know what to say. It's very weird when, once again, Jeff, poor guy, has, has landed himself solid audio description on a not great film. I wasn't a fan of No One Can Save You as a film, but I recognize he had solid audio description on that. 
Um, this one is, is hard to appreciate the audio description because he's forced to highlight jokes that aren't funny. You know, it's like reminding somebody that that was a fart joke, right? And you're like, well, the fart joke wasn't funny. So thanks for the reminder. I, I picked up all <laughs> But I mean, that's what he's supposed to do because somewhere out there, somebody might laugh. Somebody might really love fart jokes. And for that one guy, they got the audio description for it. So um, find out if your kid is the one kid that likes these this humor and uh, let them watch it. It's, it's, not, it's not for adults. It's a camp movie. Um, the, uh, yeah, the, the adult is no longer the lead. He was sort of the lead in the first film. Uh, here, the adults are not the leads. They're supporting. They're, Woody makes the most connection with the young girl uh, who's the, the daughter of the woman who runs the camp. She's arguably the lead of the film in terms of humans. So I don't know what to do with this film. I gave Woody Woodpecker a D plus and I will acknowledge the fact that this film is better. I still don't like this franchise. I don't know what they're doing with Woody Woodpecker. I don't know why they can't put people in these films that people have heard of before. There are definitely people who like used to get work, but don't get work anymore and could easily be in these films. Like, I don't know, Heather Graham, you know, like what's stopping Heather Graham from doing this film? Like she did best Christmas ever. She's not doing anything else. <laughs> just, I mean, did you call? Like, did you check to see whether or not? It's just there's so many actors out there that used to be famous that you could put in here, but they just seem to like put out casting calls for these Woody Woodpecker movies for people that are just like, do you have a resume? No, good. Apply for this movie now. <laughs> come, come join the Woody Woodpecker franchise. <laughs> um. You know, I just, I think, you know, I think there's some talented people who just don't get enough work that if you just put a little bit of effort could really help round out these films. Um, I don't want to just start listing a whole bunch of actors who aren't, who should be working more, but uh, you get the point. There are actors you could put in this film. So if they make a third, which is totally possible at this point, by the way, um... Who knows? But, uh, yeah, Universal seems to be invested in the Woody Woodpecker. Keeping keeping it going. Every six years, I guess, we'll get a Woody Woodpecker film. So, uh, that's it. I'm giving Woody Woodpecker a C-. It's one step up from a D-plus that I gave Woody Woodpecker first film. Wish I gave a D-plus because, honestly, I'd rather watch Woody Woodpecker again than I would watch Yogi Bear. So I have to acknowledge that, again, there's like a step system because I could always think of a film that's worse, you know? And then I'd rather watch Yogi Bear again before I'd rather watch Marmaduke. So, like, <laughs> there's like this level. <laughs> there's like a leveling thing that's happening here. Anyway, um, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I will see you guys on the other side.